All right, let's get right into it. This is the Soul System in the brand new upcoming space game. This is the Soul System in the brand new upcoming space game, Falling Frontier. What we're seeing here is never before seen footage, uh, exclusive for this channel that has been sent over by the game's publisher, Hooded Hall. So my thanks to them for sending this over. Uh, very, very interesting stuff, actually. So what we're going to start with is a tour of the Soul System. The recent Falling Frontier trailer gave us a bit of an indication of what that's all about, but this is the first time we get a nice up-close look. On the right, there's a brand new uh, UI element. This has recently been added. It's effectively the uh, celestial object side panel that allows us to uh, switch between different planets. Currently, uh, Saturn is selected. This can then be expanded out to show the various moons. I mean, let me just let you guys know. This game looks so beautiful. It looks so beautiful. You know, for, for a real-time strategy 4X game, this is very impressive, man. All right, so let's, let's, let's just get into it, man. Around your chosen planet. You can then instantly switch between these locations just by selecting them on the UI or from the uh, system itself. So we can see that around some of these moons, not much is going on, simply because nothing has yet been developed around them. Other moons, meanwhile, do have space stations around them and other such outposts. Meanwhile, the little element, UI element up the top there has just shown us that a civilian shipyard has just been completed. Really loving the multiple zooming stages here. So that was Enceladus. Now, as I go quiet here, you may... So, so beautiful. Damn. Man, this is an indie developer, man. Like, this... I will support, I support projects like this. The same way I support Star Citizen. And all I'm saying is, if you have a project that you're trying to push the limits, right? This is the most beautiful real-time strategy game I've ever seen thus far ever. Right now, in terms of like, when it comes to real-time strategy games, this is like Star Citizen. <laughs> when it comes to real-time like real strategy games, this like goes way beyond your expectation. And look, 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 look how realistic it's, it, it is, right? The star, whatever star we're in, this is the sun. We're, we're in Seoul, so the sun, right? The sun is in this direction, all right? You guys can see my mouse, right? And look how the shadows are actually, see how the shadows go, go all the way through to the back based on the direction the sun is or where the planet has orbited in? That is so cool. That is so cool, all right? Let's continue. You notice the music in the background. This music is the official music straight from the game. At least it was included with the footage that Hooded Horse has sent over. In my opinion, this is very, very fitting for this style of game. And you listen to how it changes as we uh, walk through this footage as well. Very fitting, as I say. Now, one of the things I think is going to be especially interesting with Falling Frontier is the relative complexity of each of the planetary systems. Not only do you have the star system, but you actually have access to each star system. Both Saturn and Jupiter, of course, are fairly complex because they're made up of a lot of different moons and other various bodies out there. The complexity of these can be increased as you slowly construct space stations, but also as you bring fleets and spaceships into the equation. Now you will have noticed as that spaceship was selected there, the TVF Pinnacle, we could see both the class of the ship as well as the crew on board. And here we're given a bit of a closer look at the scanning menu. Do check out the little window, the little UI element in the bottom left there. It gives us a preview of each object as it's selected. Currently no target selected. So the amount of objects we can see here seem to be entirely dependent on the range at which we're zoomed in. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the details of how this all plans out, but the asteroid selected just a moment ago, the Skull, seems to be very similar to the ones that are around the uh, refinery right there. Seems very, very likely then that those asteroids are resources. But you can also see that various asteroid fields are also named. Now, zooming right out, still in the scanning menu, we can get a broader view of the entire star system. We've got Mars here and Earth as well. I'd love a look at Earth, but unfortunately we don't get to see that in this footage, but in a moment we will get to see both Mars as well as Earth's moon. If you are a content creator... Alright, 
So we're we're not we're not doing this. Back low, a right. bit of a look at the refinery and the waste station. So it's switched over to the logistics menu here. And what's going on is that connections are being made between the various different uh, objects, the various different stations. Specifically between the refinery and the two different way stations. It seems to be that those connections can be made between the different planetary systems. So that the range is a pretty extensive there, at least it seems that way. So connections between various stellar objects seem to be very, very easy to make. We can also see at the top there, the refinery has got listed connections. That's two way stations, both highlight on the uh, line as they're selected. Also very, very easy to remove those connections if you no longer want them. Unfortunately though, it seems we're going to have to wait and see as to the importance of way stations. Uh, currently the footage doesn't actually show what these are all about, but uh, at a guess it seems very likely they're going to be required to supply resources to a fleet and various different ships. It's being closed here. Man, but look at that. Regular view of the game. Damn. Like, I'm so impressed on how good this game looks. You know, it seems like they have, uh, they already have doubted a lot of the mechanics that will make this uh, ready to go, man. I can't wait, man. I mean, look at this. Just imagine this is your space station within a, a, a nebula. You know, look at this. Like, look how gorgeous this is. And just to let you know, in real-time strategy games, right? This is the modern real-time strategy games. These games are built in such a way that you have your own empire. Within your empire, you have an economy. And everything, all the resources that are out there are going to be physicalized, right? So that means if you have ore um, that needs to be refined, it needs to be physically moved from... from where it was uh, extracted and refined, taken to a manufacturing facility, right? So that's where you see these little tiny ships over here. They're all working, you know? So that's how it works. Like, and all these vehicles here, they all require things like fuel. You know, they have power, they have power plants that need to regenerate, that, that, that keeps the ship running. And um, they have, like, for example, quantum fuel or whatever, the, their jump fuel or whatever they need to actually move around. So that was what the way stations were that we saw earlier. So let's say um, if it's running out of fuel, it could just go to a way station to refuel and re, uh, resupply itself. So um, that's how they're building these modern, modern um, RTS games now, man. I'm really excited for it. Man. I think it's really cool returning back to the regular view of the game and once again a nice broad view of the solar system this time in the regular view rather than in the uh, scanning menu now the uh, ui menu over the side here as i mentioned is a new menu and it seems to be very very clean and pretty functional as well in fact I th the same seems to be hold true for pretty much all the ui elements that we've so far seen here in fact, in my opinion, one of the key facts, one of the key, most important elements of any good RTS game is a very clean UI. Quite often there can be a heck of a lot of stuff to manage, so adding in unnecessary complexity into the UI often results in making things uh, confusing, so it seems that, hopefully at least, has been avoided here. So here is a look at wow. Mars. Again, some more stations orbiting around it. Now, my understanding is that the solar system is the area in which the main campaign of the game will actually take place. Ultimately, yes, it's a very familiar area to pretty much all us humans. Very clear, though, that some artistic license has been taken here, but I think that really adds rather than detracts. Lovely view of Europa there, by the way, as well. So, some famous moons here, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto and Io. Some of these are certainly instantly recognisable. Europa specifically, I'd recognise that one anywhere, so uh, done a good job there. The same is true for uh, Io, which is of course instantly recognisable with its distinctive colour uh, coloration here. Yes, one of the most uh, colourful moons or bodies in the entire solar system. And here, that is due to all the sulphur magma that is scattered around the moon. So, with a brief tour of the solar system out of the way, at least parts of it, 
and uh, some overview of the scanning menu as well as a logistics menu not to mention the new UI on the uh, top of the screen as well as the right we are moving over to uh, some ships here and we're going to see a bit of combat now again I don't have too much details of exactly what is going on here but I have been given a bit of information so I'll try and enlighten you as best as I can so at the top we've got two player um, destroyers one is the Juno which you can see here the other is at the top left that is the Pinnacle coming in from the bottom is an NPC enemy destroyer slightly further down is an enemy battle cruiser that's just on its way now the battle is getting pretty intense here but you can see a mine floating towards the enemy destroyer and that has pretty successfully dealt a significant blow absolutely tearing that ship apart that leaves the Pinnacle and the Juno facing the uh, battle cruiser. Now one thing I really like here so far, at least based on the footage that we're seeing, and hopefully it does actually play out as well as this, is the relatively slow pace of the overall combat. It gives you plenty of time to actually think about what you're doing and make uh, good tactical decisions. And it seems one of those is just coming up. The Juno is currently under pretty heavy fire from the battle cruiser there, but if you look, the Pinnacle is about to interspace itself between both the battle cruiser as well as the Juno, and it's now actually taking the vast majority of the incoming fire. But as yet, it seems that the two destroyers are not just quite ready to give up the fight. Obviously, without any hands-on experience, Damn. we don't really know how uh, these two ships, or these three ships, actually balance out together. We can see that the uh, Pinnacle has 8,400 hull points or shield points left out of a total of 12,000. The Juno seems to be doing quite a bit better meanwhile. There we go, just still on 10,000 shield points or hull points there. The Juno taking, uh, the Pinnacle rather, taking most of the damage. Now, unless I'm completely missing something here, it seems we don't get to see the hit points of the enemy battle cruiser, the ship in the middle there. So that's either a design decision, They've, uh, the developers have chosen not to show that, so perhaps keep the conflict a little bit more on the edge of your seat, as you don't know how long the battle is going to carry out, or it might simply be that uh, the developer has chosen not to actually show that particular part of the UI. Again, something we're going to have to wait and see later on. At any rate, the Pinnacle seems to be holding up pretty well, it's just gone down to uh, 8,000 hollow points, just... Uh, below 8,000 hull points actually. Meanwhile, the Juno is still up there at 9,000. Uh, actually, things are starting to get a little bit more interesting here as the, uh, the Pinnacle is losing short points, hull points, pretty fast. Seems very likely that the battle cruiser does have the ability to destroy both of these ships, doesn't it? Okay, so it looks like the Pinnacle is nearly down to half of its health points. So it's probably going to have some trouble pretty soon, unless one of them, one of these ships... Man, the, the UI is so clean. Look at that. Like this, this developer is so, they're very well versed. He's very well versed in terms of um, aesthetics, man. The UI is so clean. Um, you can actually understand what it, what, 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 what you're, what it's, uh, conveying to you. And, um, I'm liking it, man. I'm really liking this. To get out of the way, the Juno is certainly better off in this particular fight. So at this point, it seems to me that there's a bit of a tactical decision having been made here that the Pinnacle has decided to take all the incoming fire to allow the Juno an opportunity to escape. The Juno is further away, it's actually not uh, firing back at the battle cruiser. At least it doesn't seem to be, possibly not wanting to... Uh, oh no, it's getting attention. destroyed. And yet you can see the pinnacle is, uh, looks like it's in trouble now. Fires everywhere. So, very much a case of or a game of cat and mouse. The battle cruiser doing some pretty hefty damage to the uh, pinnacle. Now one thing that's worth mentioning at this point is that each ship does contain a crew and these crew members are very very valuable. They're people that you'll uh, recruit over the course of your playthrough 
that they're unique individuals and they do have specific traits and skills that are beneficial to the ship on which they're on board. So if you lose these ships and you lose the crew, it could be a significant blow. More than that, the uh, Juno is taking a hard burn to get out of the way by the looks of it. The Pinnacle is down to just 2,000 health points meanwhile. So yeah, more than just the ability to lose a crew to death, they can also be captured by the enemy. And if the enemy captures them, they can then interrogate them. So uh, yeah, they could gather uh, intel from the crew, which could be a detriment to your particular side and your struggle in the ongoing conflict. In fact, as shown in a previous video, if that does happen, it's well within the possibilities for you to mount a rescue mission and attempt to go out there and rescue your crew members, something that uh, really you probably should strive for if you don't want to lose important intel to the enemy. And it looks like the uh, Pinnacle has sacrificed oh, itself no. in order to save the Juno. Okay, so after that rather interesting battle, the footage takes us back to a final tour of the uh, solar system. Bit of a look at Venus here. Uh, Venus, of course, has a very thick atmosphere. Looks pretty interesting in terms of coloration there. I'm also going to get a look at perhaps the most famous of the worlds in the star system. A uh, very quick look there at Earth. Shame it wasn't a little bit closer. But also a look at the moon as well. So that brings us to an end of this footage. I uh, hope you found it interesting. Looking very much forward to trying this game out. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Man, this 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 game is is uh I'm really interested in uh in actually getting my hands on this game, man. It's one of the games I'm really excited about. Um I've been uh I've been trying to keep my eye on it, and um I'm finding out that we might get at least early access this year hopefully hopefully we will you know even says 2021 so maybe it was meant to come out in 2021 but they held it back so hopefully this year it'll be out and um yeah man i think this is a solid game and i think uh this is a game that i might cover on the channel we'll see and uh, hopefully you guys uh like it as well man so